when we first learnt uh, numbers we started associating 1 2 3 4 all, all of these with concepts like uh, length distance but if you remember the understanding of numbers would have uh, completely changed the moment you started visualizing that on number line and by by writing it down on on this kind of a number line it also gives you uh, a chance to ask questions like oh, what's what's on this side what's on this side of zero as opposed to just thinking about okay yes there is uh, uh, something below zero which is a negative number by being able to draw it by able, by being able to visualize it it makes it much more easy to understand this concept now if i have to take the same concept out to a, a two-dimensional uh, plane or a table or a flat surface where I have uh, many different points which are scattered all over. I can't use the same uh, idea of a number line uh, between uh, two different points or across all these points because I would have to end up drawing too many of those. So I need a, a different way of uh, visualizing this or writing it down. So I say, okay, I'll choose something called a reference, which is in this case, my bottom left corner of this table. And it is from there, I would start measuring how far each of this point is. So what happens is if I am looking at this point from that reference, I put down a number line only on one direction and say, you know, to reach this point from the reference, I need to take five steps from here to here. Now notice that this five steps, there are many, or I would say infinite number of points, which are all five steps in this direction. To be able to uh, uniquely identify or pinpoint this one, I also need to say how much do I need to move in this direction, which is the perpendicular direction to this. So I say, okay, let's put down another number line here. So instead of just one number line, can I put two number lines and say, you know, to get to this point, I also need to move one step in this direction. So what really this tells me is that to be able to be able to uniquely identify this point from this reference, I have to say five steps on the length and one on the breadth. Now, this is very dependent on the reference. Right? If I move the reference to uh, some place here, definitely this would change. Now, the same point is only four steps on the length and half a step on the breadth and I could now use my uh, same uh, the similar concept of a number line going on the left side and say this entire region here would have negative steps that I need to take. So I'm really just building upon the whole uh, visualization of numbers using a number line uh, onto a two dimensional or a flat surface with infinite number of points. Let's take this further. I have a flat surface with many different points. So how do I now build this system which can help me identify these? So as we said, the first thing is to say where is the zero point or the reference point and which are the directions in which I can move for measurement of uh, the distance. So I say there are two directions and I put down the numbers on that and I get all these intersection points which look like a graph or you can call it a chart or Correct by any name. Now, for this point, how do I say uh, the distance from reference is two steps on in this direction and one in this? And similarly for all the other locations. Uh, and you notice here I would have to say uh, minus 12 and a minus 3 because I need to take negative steps on both the directions. And as uh, discussed earlier this is very dependent on the reference so the 2 1 that was earlier the value of this point is now 5 and 4 because that's the distance I now need to move because the reference has moved so what really are the building blocks so the way this rep entire representation of points is what we call as analytic geometry and these are the building blocks what are these the reference point itself then the direction in which I can move the, or the axis that we call it. The commonly uh, used notation is to say this one is x and this is y. And uh, what is really the distance I need to move on, uh, on both in both these directions to reach a given point. If this is uh, small x and small y, then 
the unique identifier for a point is really written as x comma y or this these are the coordinates of this point or the unique identifier if you have to call it so these three things together are the building blocks uh, and, and let's see how do we take this further from here right so on on this graph i have uh, infinite number of points now i have been able to figure out a way of identifying specific points now what do i what more can i do here now let's say if i start putting some restrictions on the values that x and y can take right? so if i now start restricting all these infinite points into a smaller set and say let's let's start with a simple one where y is equal to x so i said give me a subset of points where both these uh, coordinate values are actually are equal to each other so what could be some of the sample points as you see it would have a 1 and 1 if it's minus 1 then y also would be minus 1 uh, minus 5 minus 5 4 and 4 and when i plot these sample points very interestingly you would see that they are all in a in a straight line so what's really happened is from this whole set of infinite points the moment i have put this restriction of y is equal to x i have narrowed down that whole thing to a, a, a specific shape which is a line right and uh, this shape you can think of it as it's a visual representation of this restriction or uh, in, in algebraic uh, language you would call this as an equation it's the most simplest equation where you say y is equal to x it could be more complex than that but analytic geometry is really uh, this linkage yeah, you, from using the fundamental building blocks to now take this forward to say all my algebraic equations if i start representing those visually here what are the kind of different the different shapes they can result in how do they look um, how does an equation uh, how, when i want to see it how does it uh, visually look like so that's the whole i would say analytic geometry uh, that's the uh, that's what it's all about let's try some more combinations if i say y is x plus 4 then i would get a different set of uh, sample points and when i plot these i again end up in a straight line although it's a little shifted from where the earlier line was and now this one you can say is a visual view of y is equal to x plus 4 let's try multiplying x with something right so if i say y is 2x minus 1 so if x is 3 then y is 2 times uh, x minus 1 that's 5 so similarly if i plot Uh, these sample points they again fall into a straight line so what's really happening here so we started off in all these three combinations with y is equal to x x we added some fixed values we also multiplied by fixed values subtracted fixed values so in all these cases we still end up in a straight line now if you have to ask a question so what really was common in all these three cases right so what was common is that the restriction or the relationship uh, did not have any power of x in the sense of x square or x cube there was no multiplication of x and y together it was just x y <coughs> and fixed values and uh, all of these combinations really resulted in a straight line on the graph and hence these are real these are called linear functions which basically uh, where the, what we are saying is that when you try to visualize these you would end up in a line in a straight line so that's just a, i would say a, just the basic example will build upon these uh, concepts more in the subsequent sessions on the different characteristics of lines and uh, also other shapes like circles or parabolas hyperbolas ellipses and how different shapes have different uh, equations underneath and this whole linkage between algebra and uh, geometry Uh, in in this whole uh, uh, in, in in our study on analytic geometry uh, so we would cover that in the subsequent sessions thank you